Hello, I'm Sarah, and I want to show you how to set up OBS Studio, which stands for Open Broadcaster Software, um, on your Windows device to use in the VIP Kid Classroom. So the first thing to know about OBS is that typically it's used more kind of in the gaming community. Um, so a lot of the tutorials and troubleshooting guides out there are aimed for that setting. Um, and what they're doing is they are streaming. So all of the information from their OBS feed is the video, the audio, everything is going directly to whatever streaming service they're using, whether it's Twitch or YouTube or whatever it is. Um, we're doing things a little bit differently. So to use OBS to display props, rewards, overlays, you name it, um, in the VIP Kid Classroom, we're actually using what we call a virtual camera. So with the virtual camera, it's not sending any audio. It's literally telling the classroom, hey, whatever I'm seeing in my feed, that's my webcam. <laughs> and so in the classroom, you'll just select it like you would your normal internal webcam or external webcam. Um, and it kind of tricks the system into thinking, yes, this is a camera. <laughs> so sometimes people will post with issues about audio not working, that's kind of a separate thing from what we're doing. Um, your audio is still going directly from your headset or your mic or whatever it is that you're using. The other thing to note with the virtual camera is that as of right this second, and things could change in the future, um, the virtual camera plugin, which is how we use that, is only Windows compatible. Right now, there is not a Mac version of that. There are some kind of extensive roundabout ways of using a Mac device with OBS, but it involves also learning additional pieces of software. Um, so it's not typically something that we're able to help troubleshoot with. Um, so the rest of this guide is kind of going to be geared more towards Windows users specifically. I recently got a new laptop, so as I was installing OBS and the virtual camera plugin, I recorded as I was doing all of this. So this is my actual install from my new device. So the first thing to do is open the browser of your choice. So I use Opera because it's a little bit lighter. Um, search for OBS, or you can click the links um, in the group going to open up OBS Studio and select the download for Windows. So for the installer, it doesn't matter where you put that. Um, I think I just put it in my downloader, download file. Um, to -to -do, once it has downloaded, then you are going to run the installer by double clicking. So, um, Again, a lot of these settings are specific to gamers, so you're going to do your normal. Next, next, I agree. This you need to pay close attention to. So this is a destination folder where your files will go. Make a mental note of what it says in that box. When we get to the virtual camera, it needs to match exactly. And it will install all of your files. Do, 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 do. All right, so you are going to finish, and then it will launch OBS for you. You'd want to open it up and run it before you worry about the virtual camera yet. Um, so again, a lot of these settings especially are specific for streaming, which we are not doing. We are using a virtual camera output. Um, so I'm not sure which of these is better. I don't think it matters. <laughs> I selected optimize for recording since we're not streaming. Um, and then these two boxes, I didn't change anything. I was just 
looking at the options. All right, so we are going to apply the settings. And then I'm going to close out of it completely. All right, so now we need part two. We need the virtual camera plugin. Without this secondary piece of software, you, it will not show up in the classroom. So this is a have to do step. Um, if you just search OBS virtual camera in the search engine of your choice, it's the first option. Um, you're going to click the button that says go to download over on the right and it will start downloading your installer file. Again, this part doesn't matter where you save it, just wherever your downloads go. Um, and then you're going to run the installer. When I learn how to double click, yes, good. All right, so you are going to accept the agreement, whatever we're agreeing to. <laughs> Hit next, ding, ding, ding. Look at this menu, make sure it matches what you put for the main program. If those two files, yep, it's good. you're gonna get this? Yes, you still wanna install to that folder, sure do. Um, you just want one camera, we don't need four for what we're doing. I don't think it breaks anything if you select four, but we just need one. Um, all right, cool, succeeded. Do, do, do. Going to finish the setup, get out of my browser. And then the next thing we're going to do is check to make sure that that install was successful. If you have install them in the same location, those two pieces of software should be able to talk to each other and should work correctly. Um, what you see here is I'm just adding a video capture device just so that I've got something on my feed instead of a black screen. Um, oh, hello me from like two weeks ago. <laughs> All right, gonna click okay. I'll go through all the setup of your scenes in a separate video. All right, so to make sure everything is working as it should, you're going to click the menu that says tools and virtual cam. Um, if that virtual cam is not an option under tools, it means you did something wrong and something did not install where it was supposed to. Um, under this, you want to make sure you click auto start, set your buffering to zero, and s click start. If that virtual camera isn't started up, um, then you're not going to see it as an option in the classroom. One annoying thing of note as of right now, April of 2020, is that at the moment, VIP Kid will not allow you to test your settings in the classroom unless you are either in the middle of a class or in the five minutes immediately before a class. Um, and then it, after a class, even if you've still got that kind of five minute window before your next one starts, as soon as you hit end class, it won't let you open your camera or do anything like that. This makes people panicky when they're trying out new software because they want to make sure that it's going to work, it's not going to cause a system issue, um, and that they're not going to get docked a class because they had an IT issue. Um, one way to kind of work around that is to check to make sure that your virtual camera is giving the output that you want um, in another service. So this virtual camera, we're using it for the classroom primarily, um, but you can use it for lots of different things. You can use it for Facebook Live, you can use it for Google Hangouts, you can use it for Zoom, which has a lot of these features built in so you don't really need to, <clears throat> but we can use Zoom um, or one of those things that you already have to test it out and make sure that other programs are viewing your OBS camera 
um, as a webcam option. So I already had Zoom installed on my computer, so um, I'm just going to test it out in there. So all I have to do is click New Meeting. I'm not meeting with anybody. I'm just pretending. Um, so I oh this awful. All right, <laughs> it's just because I'm doing a display capture, <laughs> and so now it looks super crazy. Um, but it won't do this. It's just because it's capturing everything on my computer screen, and so now I'm feeling a very sort of uh, Ray vibe right now. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> um, sorry, I got distracted. So to make sure that your video source is working, you're going to go down here where it says um, stop video, which I think I'm blocking. Let me move me for a minute. All right, so you're gonna go down here where it says stop video. Um, click that little arrow and it should give you all of your options. So my options are my webcam, my external webcam, my internal webcam, and OBS camera, which should be the default name of your virtual camera. As long as this is showing up and you're getting an active feed, um, in your display, then it should work the same way in the classroom and you should feel fairly confident that you're not going to have any sort of crazy bizarre issues pop up as long as you're opening things the same way and kind of your setup is consistent. Um, this is giving me kind of that assurance that the OBS program is creating that virtual camera and the output is going through. Um, so that's kind of one way you can double check yourself without having any sort of practice classroom or being able to access the classrooms in advance.